Okay, on this slide here, we're going to talk about the uh, counterculture um, during the 1950s. And uh, they were called the Beatniks. Um, the Beats were inspired by early American figures uh, in literature, such as uh, Henry David Thoreau, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Herman Melville, and especially Walt Whitman, who is addressed as the subject of one of Allen Ginsberg's most famous poems, A Supermarket in California, which we read in our uh, Lit 4 class. Also, uh, Edgar Allan Poe was uh, occasionally acknowledged, and Allen Ginsberg saw Emily Dickinson as having influence on beat poetry. So, how the beatnik style made the underground mainstream by Macy Skidmore on anothermag.com. In her article, she says, the beat movement, though short-lived, existed in a blaze of glory through the 1950s, during which time some of the most revered figures of the 21st century counterculture channeled their frustration with the materialism that flourished in the post-war years into novels, poetry, music, and artwork. Allen Ginsberg, Jack Kerouac, and William Burroughs dominated the literary sphere, while fast, frantic jazz threatened the music establishment. Throughout creative culture, the powerful belief held by a select few that there the most exciting ideas were to be found beneath the established dark, gloomy underbelly carried it along for the best part of a decade. And yet, when beat had burnt itself out and the ideas underpinning its disseminated out into more general anti-capitalism ideas around the hippie movement of the 1960s, what remained were the beatniks. While in the mainstream, adolescents were donning billowing hourglass skirts an echo of Christian Dior's new look, beatniks opted for black lots of black, and favored streamlined silhouettes which deferred attention away from themselves. Straight-legged cigarette pants and black turtleneck sweaters became the uniform of choice. Dizzy Gillespie, a b-hop trumpeter, became one of the many inspirations. His goatee, beret, and horned rim glasses were endlessly emulated by legions of followers and pseudo-intellectuals. The stereotypical beatnik woman, in her memoir, Minor Characters, Joyce Johnson describes how the stereotype was absorbed into American culture. Beat generation sold books sold black turtleneck sweaters and bongos, barrettes, and dark glasses, sold a way of life that seemed dangerous fun, thus to be condemned or imitated. Suburban couples could have beatnik parties on Saturday nights and drink too much. So the counterculture of the beatniks um, really kind of rebelled against the materialism um, of the current culture. They uh, created their own forms of poetry, 
combining poetry with jazz music, uh, having readings in uh, coffee shops. Uh, they were, of course, influenced by the authors of the day, um, Ginsburg and Burroughs and Kerouac. And um, that lasted for about uh, 10 years. And it transformed itself uh, in the 60s uh, to the hippie generation. So uh, let's uh, wrap up our, our piece on the counterculture and our overall piece on the 50s with a video from uh, Miles Davis, uh, jazz trumpeter, and one of the most famous uh, albums uh, created in 1959, but still a part of any music aficionado's collection today, A Kind of Blue. And the song is called So What? <laughs> 